good morning. It's pre-op time. I believe it's like 6 a.m. Everything is on schedule. Um, in the back, I'm changed, as you all can see. And I want to show you guys. I'm wearing, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I'm wearing my Ted stockings, ready for surgery. A little bit nervous, but I'm faithful and I'm hopeful that all will go well as anticipated. My incision as you can see looks pretty good right good morning everyone today is friday so i am post-op day i think day three today will be a post-op day three i just want to say thank you to everyone who left me comments who sent me messages who sent prayers and well wishes they were all received i can't tell you how indebted and how grateful i am to all of you for even taking the time out to wish me well i feel fine um the incision looks good Stary strips and underneath it i have dissolvable sutures which the doctor will direct me what to do about it obviously i'm not going to pull it off or anything like that i can resume normal activities except i should not lift anything greater than 10 pounds and when I'm showering, I just have to be sure that the water is not like continuously running on my neck area. And that's really it. I don't have really any other activity restrictions. So your girl has been up and moving. Some of you up. all reached out to me, not only on here, but also on my other social media platforms, asking me about my entire journey and what led up to this diagnosis. I'm going to do a separate video just to tell you all everything that happened because this started back in 2016 and it was one of the craziest things that ever happened in my life. I'm share this funny thing with you guys though. Maybe it's, maybe it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. But when I was like talking to the anesthesiologist and the CRNA and after my surgeon came and marked me up and they're like, we're going to call back for you in the next five minutes. The only thing going through my mind was, oh God, please don't let me die. Please don't let me suffer a stroke under anesthesia and die. Because remember the blood pressure issues I've been having. So prior to going into the OR, my blood pressure was like 130s over 70s, the lowest it's been. It's it was it, like, that was crazy to me. And then coming out of surgery, it ran like in the 120s to 130s systolically. Since I've been home, I've checked it daily and it's running in the 140s over like 70s to 80s. So I'm continuing to take the meds. But when I tell y'all I was afraid to die, I was afraid to have a stroke and die. I just pulled up at the grocery store, but before I go in, let's just jump into this nurse talk because by the time this video goes up, most of you would have already been well-versed in the situation that's going on nationwide. Now, many of you by now should be familiar with the news of the feds cracking down on a group of individuals who ran three different nursing schools located in Florida. Now, what these individuals did was they started these programs or these schools that offered things like LPN, RN, um, CPR courses, medication tech, like all of these different courses. And underneath the guise of those accredited institutions, what they were doing was selling LPN diplomas and RN diplomas slash degrees to individuals that were willing to pay upwards of $17,000. Okay. Now, upon making the purchase where they would receive either an LPN degree or diploma or an RN, they were eligible to sit and take the NCLEX. People were questioning how were they eligible to take the NCLEX? And from what I understand is that the school's that awarded those fake diplomas and fake degrees were actually accredited schools by the Board of Nursing. So the people who issue the test date for NCLEX, Pearson View, they're not checking to see whether or not you're legit or you're not legit. So long as you have the paperwork and the documentation saying that you're from an accredited school, the Board of Nursing has approved it. All right, we run the paperwork through. Here's your test date. Now, what caused the investigation apparently was that in comparison to the nationwide passing, which I believe it's like 80 to 90 or 95 percent, the schools that these students were graduating from when they sat to take the NCLEX, they were scoring like 
less than 20% of them were passing. So that triggered an investigation like what is going on with these three And what they realized after finalizing their investigation was that there was no coursework and no clinical. So these individuals who sat and took NCLEX, which some of them passed by the way, right? Because some people just have good luck or they might have studied to take the NCLEX, like a review book or something, and they were able to pass, but they have no clinical and theory background behind it. So you're telling me that there's people out there who actually walked into a clinical setting with no foundation and they were caring for people. Word in these nursing streets is that it is not looking good for Florida's Board of Nursing because apparently they've already had a reputation for being subpar. And now this, one of the individuals whose names is listed underneath the list of people who got arrested, I know of that person and this is not their first rodeo. This person did federal time before for running the same scam a couple of years ago in New York City. And now here they are again. The minute I heard about this Operation Nightingale and heard all the hoopla going on, I said to myself, I know such and such is involved in it. There is no way she's not involved. And sure enough, I did my research, pulled up the court documents, and there goes that person's name. Like, girl, you're going to do time, real time this time. So what do you guys think? Because the conversation going on on social media was, do we strip those individuals of their licenses? To me, yes. But then you've had some people saying things like, well, they already work in, they did pass the NCLEX, just let them practice. It wasn't their fault. No, those people do have some form of criminal obligation. They were complicit in it because they knew that they weren't going to clinical. They knew they weren't sitting in the classroom. They paid upwards of $17,000 to get a degree and to be able to take the NCLEX knowing that none of it was legit. So they were willing to put the public's health at risk. And what I want to point out here about this is Another way that nurses, real nurses, true nurses that go through the actual program and graduate legitimately and take their NCLEX legitimately, we do a lot of saving as far as public safety is concerned. And let me explain to you how. If you're a nurse on here watching this, I'm pretty sure you can attest to what I'm saying. Within the clinical setting, as nurses, not only are we paying attention to our patient safety, but we're also keeping an eye sometimes not always consciously on our co-workers who we find suspect because there have been situations where and you guys tell me in the comments if i'm wrong where a nurse gets hired into your department or a new nurse is working on your unit and you realize like mm -mm, something is not right with that person like is this is, is he or is she really a nurse like where do they get their their degree from because something's not right and oftentimes the nurses working at the bedside, indirect patient care, we're the ones usually signal, signaling to the managers like, nah, you did not do your due diligence or human resources did not do their due diligence because this person is not right. I really hope that this Operation Nightingale and all of this fraudulent behavior and activity does not diminish nurses reputation within the public because we truly are the most trusted profession we do hold a high integrity we do the right thing even when no one is watching finished with my groceries and then i have this sudden urge to drink one of those like passion fruit thingies from starbucks you know those passion fruit akai drinks i think i had one maybe two years ago and i don't know why i'm craving for one right now maybe i just wanted something to drink that was this color I don't think you guys know this about me, but before going to nursing school, I worked as a barista in Starbucks. I worked at Starbucks for a total of maybe four years while I was in nursing school. And it was one of the best jobs of my life. I knew how to make all the drinks. And I think if I were to work at Starbucks again, I think I'll catch on pretty quickly. Now, I don't know how to make all this new Gen Z stuff. That's what I call all these drinks. But Give me two days and I'm sure I'll be good. So I've been meaning to apologize because I feel like my speech is not where it should be. And I think partially is due to the swelling that I have going on around here and a little bit of swelling underneath my chin. So I feel weird talking. But before I came back in the house, I stopped at the ATM to take some cash out. And the reason for that is because I am on a budget, a very strict budget. And I'm also trying to refrain from using my credit card and my debit card for every single little purchase. 
I took out a certain amount of cash that should get me through for the next week and a half, almost two weeks. Like I took out money for groceries. I took out some money for gas. I also took out some miscellaneous money just in case one of my children wants Chick-fil-A or something like that. And when the cash is done, it's just done until it's time for me to re-up again on cash because I have financial goals. And by constantly swiping, swiping my debit card, using my credit cards, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to follow in my mom's footstep. My mom is a big user of cash. She does not like using debit cards. She feels just like a lot of the financial like gurus will say. Like there's more of an emotional connection when you're carrying cash versus when you're swiping a card. So that is going to be my new thing moving forward. I'm going to call the month of February frugal February because it's going to be a very frugal month. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you all again in the next video.